Hey everyone, I'm Nick Raboy from MongoDB, and in this video we're going to see how to use MongoDB Compass, which is MongoDB's graphical user interface for engaging with your MongoDB instances or clusters. So up on my screen you'll notice that I do have Compass running. It is available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. The first thing that you're going to be presented with is an opportunity to connect to a new database. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to enter your MongoDB URI string or choose the advanced connection options to specify information about your instance or cluster. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paste in a URI string. And I'm going to say connect. Now it may take a moment or two to connect, but once you are connected, you'll notice some information about your connection on the left. So for example, you have information about the hosts for this particular uh, connection. And more importantly, for this example, you have information regarding the databases that this particular user has access to. So for example, I have access to all of these databases, which I can drill down deeper into any of these. I'm going to click on, say, for example, Sample and Flix, and I can view all of the collections that are available for that database. Now, your databases and your collections may vary depending on the level of access that your user has when connecting to MongoDB Compass. For example, this user that I have has access to all databases and all collections. Now let's go ahead and click on any particular collection in this list. So for example, I'm going to click on Movies. What it's going to do is it's going to show me a sample set of my documents that I can sift through. I can make changes to any of these documents by clicking on any of the fields, making edits, adding fields, etc. I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel for this example. I could even choose to add new data to this particular collection. So I can say insert document. It will bring up a prompt where I can either enter it as pure JSON or BSON, or I can use the more uh, kind of graphical user interface approach of adding new fields along the way. We're not going to add a new document in this example. I'm going to slip on over to the schema side of things, so the schema tab. So you'll have access to the schema tab. And this is useful if you want to get a glance at what your collection might consist of. So I'm going to click on Analyze Schema, and it's going to analyze a sample set of 1,000 documents or less, depending on how many documents you have in your collection. And it's going to show you what fields exist and the percentage of how often that field exists in your, in your documents. Because as you know, when it comes to MongoDB or document databases, your fields don't have to exist on every document. So for example, I can scroll through them. I can see, for example, cast has array or string. So two different data types here. Uh, countries is, again, array or string. Uh, full plot is string. I also have sample data that goes along with it. Uh, you'll notice that some of it is undefined, and you get a percentage. So for example, you have undefined 7%, whereas 93% of the documents in the sample set have a 93 percentage of being string. Um, so it can give you insight into, for example, let's say that some of your data um, is a string or some of your data is a numeric value, an integer. Well, maybe at some point in time in your application, uh, your data was, in fact, a integer. But as the application evolved, maybe you've since converted it to string and have not migrated that old data into string format, or maybe you just don't care and you're using both. Um, it's up to you. Uh, what you can also do in the schema side of things to view your schema is you can drill down. So for example, fields may not just be flat. This IMDB field, for example, has a field type of document. So I'm going to expand it. And inside of document, you'll notice that we do have an ID, a rating, and some votes. Um, so all of which have their own data types associated to them. Um, so this could be very useful information, once again, when it comes to identifying what exactly exists in each of your documents for your collection, so that way you can plan things appropriately. Now there are other tabs that are quite useful when it comes to working with your data with MongoDB Compass. So for example, I can head on over to the Indexes tab. Well, right now I have two different indexes for this particular database. I have the default ID index, and then I have this custom index called cast, text, full plot, etc. So a very long index name. I can choose to delete indexes. I can, I can expand them to see what exactly the index consists of. I can choose to create a new index. Uh, so for example, I know what my queries should look like. I, I know the data that I want to index. And I can go ahead and define an index based on the fields and how I'm going to be using that data. So you'll notice on the top right that I have two indexes for this particular database. 
I even have a output of how many documents exist in this particular collection. So let's go through the rest of the tabs that Compass offers to give you an idea of, of some of the stuff that you can accomplish. So moving away from indexes, let's say that we want to do a more aggressive type query against our data. So a simple find operation within MongoDB might not be enough because a filter criteria, it only gets you so far. So instead you might want to do an aggregation pipeline. So this is a multi-stage pipeline of manipulations that happen against your data. Um, and the good thing about MongoDB Compass is you get a graphical user interface when designing that pipeline. So you get, a, you get to see everything in action as it happens. So for example, let's go ahead and scroll down. Let's create the first stage of our pipeline. We know that this is our sample set of the documents in question. We have preview enabled. Let's go ahead and scroll down and we're going to say that we want to do a match stage. So we want to match on documents that match a certain criteria. So in this case, we know that year is up here. So let's go ahead and, and make a criteria based on year. So we're going to say year, and we're going to say the year, let's go ahead and say is going to be 2010. You'll notice that it output some documents that, that meet that match criteria. It's not going to be all of them, but it gives you an idea so that way you know your data is accurate. So if I scroll down, it says year is 2010, year is 2010, everything looks good. I can add another stage to the pipeline. So what happens after the match query? Maybe I want to do a limit. So maybe I want to limit the results that came back after that. So let's limit it to, let's say three. We know that potentially 10 or more documents met this criteria. So this is a sample set of 10. Let's say that we want to limit it to three results. I'm going to uh, have it auto generate. And this time around the sample set is three documents to match this particular stage of the pipeline. Now your pipelines can get much more complex than what I have here. Uh, this is only an example to show you that you do have a graphical user interface to help you when designing these potentially complex pipelines. So let's move along. Let's say that we want to evaluate the performance of our queries. So we can go to the explain plan tab. Let's go ahead and run a particular query. In this case, I'm just gonna say that I wanna return all documents within my collection. I'm gonna say explain. Now it's gonna tell me information about what happened based on this kind of empty filter find query. Uh, it took 15 milliseconds, which honestly isn't too bad, but had I done a more specific query and I had a specific index created, this could be a lot better. So let's go ahead and say that we want to uh, query based on year. So let's go ahead and say year 1993. And we're gonna explain. So it took nine seconds um, and it returned X number of documents. This could be improved provided that we had an actual index for 1993. Um, so it, you can drill down into the details and, and see information. It'll help you when it comes to creating more performant applications and getting the most out of your MongoDB database. So the final tab that we'll go over uh, is the validation tab. And we won't go into too much depth around this tab because it can get quite complex. But basically what we're doing is we're saying, do we want to add some kind of validation rule around our particular collection? So that way documents, for example, they must have certain fields. So they must have the year field, for example. We can add that to this particular tab and an insert will fail if the criteria of the validation blueprint is not met. So it can get pretty interesting in this particular tab. Uh, but I encourage you to visit the documentation to learn more about how to use the validation framework. One of the other cool things that you can do with MongoDB Compass is you can actually use the MongoDB shell directly within MongoDB Compass. So you get the full graphical user interface experience, but you can always go into the shell experience if that's what you prefer, or maybe there's just this example that you can't quite figure out with the graphical side of things, but you know how to do it with the shell side of things. You never know the scenario, at least you have options and they're built in together so they work very nice together. Now, there are a ton of other things. This is only a surface level kind of demonstration on what you can do with MongoDB Compass. I encourage you to browse through the documentation and see some of the features that might meet your own application and development needs. Or I encourage you to just fiddle around with Compass in general. It is a great graphical user interface for MongoDB and you can do a lot of powerful things with it. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button on your way out today and then subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, I hope to see you in the next video.